All right, let's get into this uh, Q and A. Let's wait for this train to go by actually first. Matcha is green tea, kinda. Green tea leaves, they've been pulverized. Okay, so Q&A time, I had people leave questions. I asked for people to leave them on YouTube, they left them everywhere, Twitter, Instagram. So we'll go through some of them and see which ones we can answer. So, let's start. Let's go. Let's look at some of the comments here. All right, so first question. My question for the Q&A, where do you get your socks? <laughs> Um, I get my socks from Adidas. I get the Climalite no-show socks. Those are my favorites for thin, thin socks. I always wear super thin socks with ultra, well, I don't always wear, I used to always wear just super thin socks with everything. But now these, um, the ones I wear more often now that I pull up, I don't know the name of them. They're just Adidas socks, but you can find them on the Adidas website. I mean, I pretty much just wear Adidas socks though. Rarely do I wear anything else. What is your opinion on fakes? I know a lot of people are of the opinion that it's okay as long as you aren't passing them off as real. Um, my opinion on fakes is that they're fake. <laughs> I don't really, like for me personally, I would never wear a fake. I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and condone people wearing fakes. Like, yeah, it's totally cool. Like, as long as you know, uh, like that's, it's kind of whack. Like you're not wearing the fake shoe because you like the shoe. You're trying to fit into something that you don't fit into, you know, like unfortunately, Sometimes getting it like you don't need the shoe that bad. You don't really need to do that You know, so for me fakes like I, I don't really get down with it I feel like I feel like people are kind of asking for it You know, it's like it's in our uh, wiring to point out things that we see that don't look right And you know if you're a shoe connoisseur and you see a fake it's kind of hard for you to just ignore it I'm not saying that you need to like go tell the person but you know we all snap photos and Share them and everyone's shocked to see but you know, I just don't I think the industry of fake shoes is just silly You know, there's plenty of shoes out there from plenty of price ranges and wearing fake ones just to me just seems Dumb. I just wanted to ask if I have super wide feet Which boost model would you suggest? I would go with the ultra boost ST That seems to be the one that people um, with wider feet can rock without as much of a problem so ST flash forward it's 2027 what are you doing dropping with your boost god brand 10 years from now um i don't know probably just more art i mean it's honestly like boost god just became a name and really to me like at this point it's transcended the shoe and like it's not just about the shoes to me to me it'll just be i'll probably always make stuff i've always made stuff some people think that this is the first time i've ever made anything and it's not um, i've never made anything this good Definitely like finally figured out how to make it work. I mean, I'll probably be, I'll be doing art for the rest of my life. So whether that be on clothes or just paintings or whatever, I'll still be doing it. But I, I could see myself dropping shirts forever. I don't really see that stopping. I just see that kind of progressing into a bigger brand, into a different kind of brand. But yeah, creating stuff is like the only thing I really care about. But it's impossible for me to say where it will be. You know, like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll still be here. But yeah, I mean, I. I plan on transitioning my brand into something different. I want to use my name. Um, I would like for my brand to be just called Theodore or Theodore Michael Safarian or something like that. Like I just like the name. I hated my name growing up and I just think it would be super sick to use my name as a brand name later. So um, yeah, that's my plan. That's my idea. That's my hope. That's my dream. Will you ever come to Norway? I honestly hope to come. I get questions like this all the time. You just kind of insert wherever you live or wherever, you know, any country, city, state, county. Whatever. I'd love to come to all kinds of places. Um, the whole traveling experience of all this is great. I traveled a lot before this. I traveled as a tattooer. Um, I've always been like a big traveler. My parents took me traveling when I was younger, when they were still together. So it's, it's huge for me. Like I love travel. It makes me feel good. I don't really feel that great when I'm just stuck in one place all the time, doing one thing all the time. Kind of drives me a little crazy. I'll go anywhere. You know, it's really just about being able to afford it, being able to make it worth my time uh, because some people don't realize how much money I'm having to spend just to get to all these pop-ups up the sneaker con and they're there, they're there you know it's great like support is great it's awesome it helps out a lot but um it just really depends on what can get me to those places but i'm literally down to come anywhere this comes from a place that only wants more for boost god do you see yourself expanding your brand more than shoes is it possible to have beard products is it possible for boost god to be a motivational speaker at events your value is to this world is yet to be seen speak on what's next and after that um thank you I appreciate that. Um, the brand I want to I want to go into like 
I want to make my own clothes. You know, t-shirts are great and I finally found t-shirts. Like we all wear t-shirts, so I found t-shirts that I like make that I actually like to wear. I honestly don't wear too many other t-shirts now just because of how comfortable I think my t-shirts are. But yeah, I mean, we've been working on all kinds of stuff and working on joggers and jackets and hats and socks and just all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm definitely trying to move into a different kind of fashion and not just t-shirts, not just merch. Although I have so many ideas for cool merch because I like cool t-shirts. Both will always exist to me. I definitely feel like doing more stuff. As far as motivational speaking goes, it's kind of funny, but um, I, I don't know. You know, if people, if people deem it uh, needed for me to come and do something like that, or if that many people are inspired by me, then that, yeah, I mean, I would be down for whatever. Like the whole thing was to relate and the whole, th and you know, to inspire people is awesome out of this. So, you know, if, if that's what was asked of me, then I would highly consider it. How did me and Sager meet? And when are we gonna to get to see him in a guest spot on the vlog and see his collection? Uh, me and Sager met when he was, I was already tattooing, he was just beginning to tattoo, and I, I mean, I pretty much made him the man he is today. You know? <laughs> but no, no pretty, he, uh, he was just starting out, I've been tattooing for a while. Um, I definitely like, you know, he'll tell you, I kind of took him under my wing and then um, helped him develop his art a little bit, and then we just became friends, you know, like we became friends because of tattooing and then kept in contact over the years. And when I would come to Colorado as this crazy traveler, aloof tattooer, he would put me, he would let me stay with him or let me work with them or whatever. So um, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. It's been a long time, but tattooing is what made it happen. We'll go over to get his collection soon too, because my entire collection is now over there. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go take a look at his collection. Probably when I get back from London, we'll be able to do that for sure. As well as an updated collection video for me, because I have a feeling We've got ourselves like an hour long collection video due. You continue to say that Adidas can't overdo boost until better technology comes out. Do you think 3D printing like with Future Craft 40 is gonna be that new technology? I think it's gonna be like part of the technology, but I don't think you're gonna like do away with boost. I don't think that 3D printed plastic, rubber, metal, whatever you want, whatever material you decide is gonna like compare to Boost, but I don't really know either. Um, that's just like me waiting to see, like I have no, people think I have a problem with it. Like I would, if something comes along that's more comfortable than Boost, I would gladly be like, okay, cool, this is even better, you know, like I, I just, you know, I'm waiting for that day, so I don't really like, what ifs to me are just kinda like a waste of time. I have. 3Ds, they're not as comfortable. I haven't put on 4Ds. JC has, JC swears they're comfortable, but JC's also a hype beat. JC tried to tell me in the tennis human races where it's just as comfortable, you know? Love them to death. Don't get it twisted, but I gotta put something on my feet that makes it better. Why don't you own the Future Craft 4D? Because not a single pair in my size has been for sale on the planet of Earth. When did you realize that Boost was something bigger than just shoes and would go on to change your life? Um. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Boost, I think, is a good catalyst. I think bo Boost changed my life in, in so many ways, but also I think being able to talk about something that everyone else is interested in as well. Boost definitely changed my life. It definitely helped me relate to more people, but um, I'd always been looking for some sort of uh, catalyst or some sort of vehicle to talk to people about, you know, other things, other you know, other than just one thing. Shoes just happen to be something I've been into forever, and um, it just finally all like came to a turning point. But I think it has to do with a lot of things. I think my personality and the way I approach the world, and sometimes the way I think, whether that be positive or negative to some people, is just is entertaining or interesting, or I don't really know. I don't know how to describe it. I don't think I had any idea what was gonna happen, that's for sure, when I turned on a camera. It, it's been a crazy ride so far and it seems to only be getting crazier what was on your feet before the first time you put on an NMD um, I had on slides I believe I can't remember exactly it was either slides or a tubular but I can't it, I can't remember if you go back before that I just wore random stuff so everyone always wants to know like what I actually wore like what I was into I wasn't into really anything like Someone even left a comment like I went back on his Instagram and saw some beat up skate shoes and he's right like I would just buy like two or three pairs of Vans or, like a Stefan Janowski or a Hirachi. I know that's not a skate shoe. Buy random shoes and just wear them. Nothing cool, nothing ever like hype, just 
oh, I need a pair of shoes here, you know. That was after Nike, after I got out of shoes, which was around Nike SB pink boxes. I didn't really buy anything after that. Where do you find new releases that are coming out for Adidas? Might be a stupid question, but I go on adidas.com, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's not a stupid question. I don't find releases just one place. That's the thing about really anything in life. I don't think, there's not one source, you know? There's not like, okay, let me go to the refrigerator of sneakers then get my you know like there's none of that like so there's you have to just kind of be in the mix you know it's like i'm on twitter all day i'm on my phone all day people i i've built relationships that revolve around shoes and this culture so like i hear about stuff i see stuff i'm constantly i'm i love shoes and i love adidas and i love boost so i'm like constantly taking in information so for me it's all over the place you know there's not like one place that i look you can get a twitter there's many twitter accounts you can follow i, I don't even know I don't know where to start to even name you know, there's sneaker news there's nice kicks there's all kinds of i mean there's all kinds of information out there if you just search about shoes there's plenty of stuff out there you just gotta kind of just be on it all the time it's just like releases like sometimes stuff releases early only because someone tweets a link and i just happen to be on the internet it's really about networking honestly informate to gather information you need a good network do you miss having long hair no honestly when i go back and watch the old videos I'm kind of surprised that I had long hair for as long as I did. Um, yeah, I don't miss it at all. I honestly prefer short hair. Would you rather have free salads or free weed for the rest of your life? I think I'm going to go with the weed, but I also consider them both. What's your favorite Yeezy V1 colorway? The only colorway I like is the black. I'm really not a fan of the rest of them, like, at all. Are you going to get a new dog? I don't know. Um, that's a really, really tough question. Obviously, I miss my dog like crazy. Uh, I can't even describe how bad I miss that dog. I really don't know. Like right now, obviously not because I'm traveling a lot and doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I plan on coming back to Denver to kind of settle after London somewhat, but I don't think that, still think there's going to be a lot of traveling here and there. Not quite like how it has been, but I definitely, you know, there's a lot of events. There's a lot of opportunities, so I, I like to travel to them. So if I did do something like that, if I did get a new dog, which I'm not really trying to like just replace my feelings for Doobie or um, fill this void, I don't want to do that, but I do miss having a companion especially a small companion that's not another person because you know people can drive you crazy um, I don't know you know I really don't know it'll just have to be the right time I'm not opposed to it I'm not like so hurt that I can't fathom getting another animal as much as it sucks to lose one like I I yeah I mean I don't know so I, I mean eventually I probably will and I would really like to have another English Bulldog I love English Bulldogs more than any other breed in the world I mean, there a lot of people used to comment that me and Doobie look alike. I'm just drawn to bulldogs. Like, I love them. I would like to get another bulldog. I might get a French bulldog if around the time I'm looking for a dog, I'm still traveling because I feel like I could just put the French bulldog under my arm and go. But yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Time will tell. I, I definitely miss my dog and uh, think about it every day. So yeah, just when the time's right. Because if you, you know, if you don't have time to be with your dog when he's a puppy, then you don't really get a good dog. And that was the best part about Doobie is that when he was a baby, me and him were inseparable, and he was just a really good dog. By the, especially by the time you know he was three or four, he was just like the greatest dog in the world. Do you not visit your family? You've not mentioned them. Tell us more about yourself other than shoes. There's plenty to tell. I lived a crazy, crazy life. Don't know if I can actually tell it all right now, um, but I do visit the family that I really talk to. I don't really talk to my father. Um, we just recently spoke. He actually sent me a gift for my birthday, which is kind of crazy. It's like a weird, it's a weird, it's a different gift. I'll show you guys when it gets here. I don't talk to my sister and I do talk to my mother, but we, we talk fairly often. I, I try to keep in touch with her as much as possible. It's still never enough for her. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the family outside of that, I don't speak to because I don't know. I don't have a reason to. When I was younger, my parents got divorced. It was basically just me and my mom. So I don't really like feel the need to communicate with a lot of people. So especially not now. Any advice for YouTubers starting off from scratch? Um, yeah, don't get caught up in all the bullshit. Like, don't get caught up in your view count and your subscriber count and, you know, clickbait and just not being yourself and trying to figure out what's going to get views. You know, like, it really, it's about who you are. You know, and some people try to start a YouTube for the wrong reason. Some people just want it to just be popular automatically and they do things that are out of their character to make it popular. Don't do that. You know, like, for me, YouTube was like, I started it so that I had like an archive of what was going on too. It was a good way for me to like make myself get out 
and of my routine. It was a good way to, to show off the shoes I was getting. It was a good way to talk to people about other stuff. For me, it was more of like a self-expression. So just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and you're not just looking for attention, you know, because I feel like if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're gonna get bored. You're not gonna be motivated to make the videos. This is a lot of hard work. Some people talk like, why don't you color correct? Why don't you do this? Like, because it's already a lot of work and trying to put out a vlog every day is time consuming. So don't get caught up in all these little details. Put out content, make the content as good as you can with what you have and um, just constantly build on that and keep doing it. That's really it. Like it's consistency and honesty. Those are the two things I think that'll take you the furthest. How many pairs of shoes do you have? I think we're over 200 now, but I'd have to count to be sure. I really, I really don't know. I'm gonna guess over 200. I'd guess like 230. When are you and JC coming to Canada? Soon. We both have passports now because we're going to London. I'm sure once we get back from London and Chicago, there will be something planned because we definitely both wanted to come to Canada and we have plan. Obviously, some of you saw the poster or whatever. So we're coming. We promise. Toronto, it's happening for sure. What is the best Ultra Boost for under $250? Any ultra boost, you know, like the the best question is all relative. It depends on you what you think is the best. I honestly think a pair of triple white ultra boost is one of the best shoes they put out. You know, like I love triple white ultra boost. You can usually grab them for retail. So for me, it's whatever you want to wear. Don't get caught up in the hype because you're really not going to find like what, what the most hype shoe is for 250. Depends on your size, who you're getting it from, is it new, is it used, yada yada yada. It's really about you. So um, there is no best shoe for 250. I would just say look for deals, look for the shoes that you like, and if you can find yourself a good deal, go ahead and cop. What do you put in your salads? Um, usually it's kale, chicken, bacon, avocado, cucumber, apples sometimes, walnuts sometimes, croutons sometimes, um, then oil and vinegar. I don't use really anything other than oil and vinegar, and sometimes I use really fancy infused oil and vinegars. Teddy, do you really legit un-DS all of your shoes the moment you get them? Do you ever put a pair away? Um, no, I just un-DS them as soon as I get them. If I get doubles, I'll put those away, but yeah, there's no point. Like. I don't have that kind of control. I, when I get something, I want to wear it or enjoy it. I, yeah, I just, yeah, I just wear it. Any idea for the New York City pop-up? No, I don't know the day. Well, actually, I do. It's probably going to be the 23rd, honestly. Probably the 23rd. But there's going to be two New York pop-ups: one in the city, one on Long Island. More details coming soon. Boston also before New York. Do you have any tips for getting new releases without a bot? No, not really. Not that doesn't, well, sort of. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, so, all right, so bots are not guaranteed. They just give people a better chance, a much better chance than the average person just typing into their computer. Sometimes there's a release where the bots don't even work. You know, these companies like Adidas, uh, I don't know who else, like I don't know who else is doing changes, but Adidas for sure changes things up every release to try to make it easier for you to get the shoes that you want, believe it or not. But yeah, there's no real, there's really no absolute, you know, like, the shoe game very much is about paying resale sometimes. I don't care who you are. If you haven't paid resale, you don't have everything you want. There's no way. But it's just, it just is the way it is. It's definitely like even kids who run bots fail all the time. But my advice again is network. You know, like if you can network, if you have a store that your local store that gets heat and you build a good relationship with them, a business relationship, usually just by networking with enough people around, you can kind of get whatever you need. Even if that networking is with multiple people who run bots, because then you have better chances of you know you have more people run for you or whatever it is that you need to do um, my advice is find a way I know that sounds really like kind of asinine but got to be willing to put in the work like people think it's so easy people think it's easy for me now to cop shoes and it's not not all the time like definitely have some really good people that work that look out for me like they definitely look out for me and it's much appreciated but I had to build those relationships up it didn't wasn't just like oh hey here you go yeah again networking is probably the key and getting a little lucky. If you have a store in your town that drops shoes, you're better off, you're better than we are here in Denver because no one in Denver even drops anything really. So I've had to rely completely on the internet to cop all the shoes that I've got. I think I've bought maybe one or two pairs in person in Colorado. I heard in the podcast that you were a skater heavily involved in Nike SB. Out of curiosity, who were some of your favorite skaters back in the day? John Cardiel, Brian Anderson, Mark Gonzalez, uh, Dude, there's so many people. Donnie Barley, huge influence on me. Scott Bourne, dude, there's so many people. I used to, uh, I fucked with so many people skateboarding coming up. Skateboarding completely changed my life. I went 
and skateboarded around the country when I was 16. Skateboarding was everything. Skateboarding molded me into who I am today. And Nike SB just started to be really whack after the pink boxes. That's just basically it. How much have you spent on sneakers in total? I have no idea. I don't even want to know. It's a lot. It's definitely a lot. A lot. What recent Adidas shoe do you regret buying? Um... There's no real models that I regret because all the mo they're all like similar models, right? Like I'm pretty much used to all of them. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I was like kind of bummed on recently after wearing it. I don't really, there really isn't. Like people think I'm just like lying and that I don't really like all the shoes that I get. It's really, really, there's, I like everything. I'd say the, the biggest disappointment to me as far as the way something felt on my foot was the Y3 Pure Boost. I think compared to the to the ZG from last year. Those really aren't that great. So for me, that's probably the bigger, the biggest letdown from this year. I'm trying to think. The Champs NMD that I bought, shit, that was almost a year ago. Champs NMD, that was one that I like didn't like and I sold it immediately. So before I had tried out Mesh NMDs, Mesh NMDs were the ones that I was like disappointed in, but it's pretty well documented. If Adidas didn't have Kanye, would they have nothing? Absolutely not. I don't even understand this this thinking really. Kanye definitely helped turn some people on for sure. But Boost still exists and Yeezys are definitely like a huge part of the Boost empire. Um, so it definitely helps. I'm not saying that it doesn't help. But I do think that you still would have all these great collabs and all this great sneaker culture that happens. Like Adidas is doing it right outside of Kanye. Like all the consortium collabs, Boost, um, some of the new risks they're taking with some of the shoes like they're 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 doing it so regardless of kanye they're still trying to innovate and drop new stuff where nike is i know some people will disagree with me but to me it just seems like more of the same stuff over and over again um so i don't think so i definitely think kanye has something to do with it i think pharrell has something to do with it more than those people there's a lot of influencers out here on the planet adidas has been around for a while so um no i don't think kanye made adidas who is your favorite producer or producers there's a lot of really good producers out there. I like a lot of people. Dr. Dre is one of my favorite in production. His production is insane. Uh, Rick Rubin production is insane. Um, dude, there's just there's so many people. There's so many so many people. Uh, uh, Mike Dean is a great. Mike Dean's probably one of the better producers doing it right now. Everything Mike Dean touches seems to be amazing. So there's a lot. There's a lot of good producers. I really like. I really appreciate good production, especially since I know how fucking hard it is and time consuming. God, music takes so long to make. If you were stuck on an island somewhere, which pair of kicks would you want to have with you and why? Also, will Burgos ever take a W that actually fits him? If you don't know who Burgos is, you need to get a Twitter and you need to follow me because roasting Burgos is probably one of my favorite things to do now. Love you, Burgos. But if I was on an island, I don't know that I really need shoes. And if I'm on the island by myself, I certainly don't need like crazy shoes because no one's gonna know I'm wearing the same thing every day. I wear almost the same thing every day anyway. Um, I don't know, probably just a pair of Ultra Boost or something and I would just pick one. I, I really couldn't, I can't really pick one. People always ask me to pick one shoe or something. Like if I could pick one or two shoes or like which one out of these two, I wouldn't buy all these shoes. I literally can't pick. That's why I buy all the shoes. So I have no idea. What did Nike do to make you feel the way you feel about them? I've gone over this a couple of times, even though like new people come all the time, so they don't know. Um, Nike just stopped making the stuff that I like. Like Nike used to do great releases. They used to do quick strike releases. There were great collabs. Uh, SB was like, when SB first happened, it was like creatively just so cool. There was so much cool stuff happening around it. It was an entire like force. It was like a culture. It was cool as fuck. And then it just stopped. There's a lot of reasons why Nike SB changed. You know, Nike SB basically went from being this kind of like small batch, um, really cool, nice materials, clever design. And then it kind of went into like, all right, let's make this mass produced and like put it everywhere, you know, which is what people will say about Ultra Boost as well. But it's a whole different thing because there still is that small batch stuff. There still is the collaboration as well as some of the general release stuff. They started bootlegging their own shoes. You know, like some of the Nike SB stuff I had, you could get with Nike 6.0 or they would just flood the market with like a cheaper version of the same shoe. The same shit they do now, basically. They stopped making my favorite shoes. I really liked the Nike. Nike Air 180 when I wasn't skating. Nike Air 180 was like my favorite shoe. Uh, they discontinued that model and that was pretty much it. You know, it's like, I just kind of felt like at that time, like Nike didn't really care about what the consumer wanted. They were just, you know, well, they cared about what, they, they cared about 
creating as many consumers as possible instead of keeping things the way that they were and they did away with stuff that I liked and there was just really like no reason for me to keep going and so I got rid of most of my collection the rest of it got stolen and that was pretty much it and now Nike is a brand I really just don't like I don't like the way the swoosh looks I don't like really anything about it I've just been completely turned off you know it's like a girl you used to date like she can still be fine like she can still be all right but like I don't I don't necessarily want to fuck with her are you friends with Kais? Uh, yes. I would consider myself somewhat friends with all the YouTubers that you see. And that's one thing about this when it started, right? So, like, everyone when I first started my channel asked me why I wouldn't want, didn't want to just do a sneaker collection video with Kais. Or why I didn't want to do this or that or collab and this and that. And It's because I didn't know anybody, you know? And I didn't know these guys and they didn't know me. And I didn't want to just, like, use somebody else's platform to gain traction. I wanted, this was a project for me, so I wanted to actually sit down and do the project. You know, it's just the way that I like to do things. I've met Kais, I've met a ton, I, you know, I've met Tony and Bull, and there, there's so many, you, Mike from Denver, and all these guys. Everybody's cool, you know, like, there's a lot of like, and I'm guilty of it too, there's a lot of stuff that we kind of just make up in our heads once we watch people's channels or watch people's content, and we start to just kind of judge them on stuff that really has no basis. Anytime I've ever hung out with anyone who makes a YouTube channel that revolves around sneakers, it's been nothing but love. Like, nothing but love. I have nothing but good things to say about those people on a, from personal experiences. I don't really care about like how something was perceived on the internet in a video they dropped, or whether or not you like the fact that Kite's clickbaits, but everyone's been stand up to me, so, I have no problem with anybody at all. There's been no beef. If someone has a beef with me, which I know none of these dudes I've mentioned do, but if someone who I don't even know exists on the planet has a beef with me, that's their problem. And I assure you, if they ever met me in person, they would get right over it because that's just kind of how the world works. What inspired your love for tattoos? Uh, tattooing. Just like art with this massive amount of freedom and then this crazy, just influenced by all like real life shit you know like tattoos are so interesting because it's influenced by what happens to you and your emotions and it represents like love and hate and anger and sex and romance and death and it's just there's so much shit in tattooing that is just like raw human emotion and raw human expression that it's addicting and i love it Tattooing is my first love. I, a lot of people ask me if I've quit. I definitely haven't quit. I just needed to take a little break, take a little pause, um, and get you know people aligned into doing the tattoos that I want to do. There's a lot of stuff in tattooing that's changed over the last 15 years, and I'm just trying to figure out my way around those changes to ensure that I can still do tattooing in the capacity that I want to do it and still be in love with it because, you know, Sometimes the consumers don't know what they're talking about and I just want to help educate people just like here But tattooing is a shit tattooing basically changed my entire life and has given me um, Better opportunities than almost anything in the world though. So it even made this happen So it's all it's all part of the story if there was an approval for a collab with the following adidas Oh, it's teddy adidas x. Oh, it's teddy x. Who would the third person or brand be probably a life just because I've been rocking with A-Life for so, so long. Is it true that Adidas will lose their license to Boost and every brand will be able to use Boost as well? What brands take on Boost are you looking forward to? No, it's not true. It is true that there is a, an agreement between BASF and Adidas and there is a contract. It does not end anytime soon. Other companies have already tried to develop Boost. You gotta believe that as soon as Boost when Boost became popular, every company definitely tried to develop it. I would imagine BSF has patents, and that's the reason you're not seeing anything. That's just how it is. I don't really, I'm not worried about it whatsoever. You know, other companies are going to come up with their own versions of Boost by the time this contract ends anyway. That's going to happen, but we all know how that is. There's always one original, and then there's imitators, and the imitators never go far. So I'm not looking forward to anything. I'm looking forward to other companies getting off their ass and doing something different if they want my money or my respect or me to wear their shoes. What's your ultimate dream car? One that drives me around in the air and I don't have to do anything? That would be ultimate dream car. 
why do you hate on Nike so bad? I really don't. Honestly, people ask me my opinion about it and then I express it usually. It usually comes up in Twitter or social media. A lot of it's in good fun. I mean, it is fun. I really do not like Nike, but it's really just me talking shit. Just take it as comedy, you know what I mean? Don't take it so serious. It's not like I'm out here like the Supreme guy knocking Nikes off people's feet or anything. It's not that serious. I just, I just like to talk shit. What are the chances of opening a sneaker shop in Denver? The culture needs more than we have. Um, there's a chance. There's definitely a chance. I'm definitely opening something. What are the greatest and least desirable aspects of having such a large influence in social media YouTube? Kind of the same answer for the greatest and the worst. The greatest part is feeling like you can relate to people and that you're understood and that people value what you say. The worst part is, is that you're not understood, people don't relate, and they don't value what you say. <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, but it's all really great because even with the negative, there's a lesson for you to learn there. I learn lessons every day just interacting with people. For me, there's really no bad parts. It's just parts that I need to learn how to ignore or deal with better because it really has nothing to do with me when people are being kind of shitty. The last question, uh, what keeps you driven? Um, everything keeps me driven. I definitely lose my motivation all the time. I lose my motivation daily, if not hourly. You know, sometimes I go to pick my camera up or pick up my pencil or pen and <clears throat> I don't feel like doing anything. You know, it's easier to just not do shit, you know? So um, one thing that motivates me huge now is the vlog. You guys and having people to talk to me and people to hold me accountable. And if I know if I don't post a video, I'm gonna catch shit for it. And if I don't post a few videos, I'm gonna catch shit for it. And if the content's not good, I'll catch shit for it. So all of those things keep me motivated to do my best and you know I'm still human I still have I still have things I have to deal with so sometimes it's not consistent but my heart's always in the right place you know I'm always I'm always trying to get work done and I'm always trying to at least finish something you know when I was just a tattoo artist and a painter every day I wanted to finish something I wanted to start a project and finish a project and that's just seeing the work happen and seeing it all come to fruition is highly motivating you know Seeing people wear my shirts makes me want to design more cool shirts. It pushes me to draw more. It pushes me to draw better. It's really kind of self-motivating, you know? It like, not that it all comes from myself, but like, once I put something out there and get response and, um, it just keeps going, you know? And then I never, I'm never satisfied. You know, like that's one thing about me is like, I'm literally never satisfied. I stand up from artwork and videos and everything. And to me, I see a hundred things wrong with everything, every single time, it never stops. And you know, the next morning I wake up and I want to do it again. Instead of letting my dissatisfaction with my product or my dissatisfaction with my output creatively or whatever um, cripple me, I just, use it as fuel and for the next day I try to outdo what I did the day before. That's how I became a good tattoo artist, that's how I became good at drawing, that's how I became good at this, and that's how, pretty much how I'm gonna become good at everything that I wanna do. So that's how I approach everything. You just gotta not get discouraged. It's really about how you hit back and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all the questions I got for today. That was quite a few questions. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for sitting through that. Thank you for sitting through my vlogs. Thank you for your support, and we will see you guys soon.